Hi, I'm Dr. Padilla. In this video series, we talk about visualizing data in R. And today we're going to discuss how to specify information on our axes in ggplot. So let's jump right in. All right, so the first thing we're going to do in R is we're going to load the library ggplot if you don't have that loaded already. And we're going to use this toy data set that I used in the previous video tutorial. And this code is going to be in the description, so you don't have to, to type it out. Now, what I have here is I have three different options for specifying the limits in our data. We have option one, option two, and option three. And each of these have different level of specificity that they allow to us. So I'm going to show you how to do the same thing in basically each of these approaches, but it will also illustrate to you the pros and cons of each of these techniques. Um, what we're going to do is first, we are going to create a simple plot with ggplot using our data set that we had previously generated. And this um, plot we generated in this video that I'll link in the description. Okay, so basically what we have is a simple visualization where we have two groups and then we have this regression line for each of the group groups that shows the different trends. Now this is fine. If you wanted to, you could stop here. And ultimately what's going on is because visualizations have a grammar, we're learning the grammar of graphics, this type of visualization is the equivalent of a very simple sentence, like the dog chased the cat. It communicates just fine, but you might want to become more sophisticated in the way that you communicate. And to become more sophisticated, and sometimes what you want to do is to become more specific and control things more carefully. This is just really all of the default properties that come with ggplot. So what we can start to do is specify things like the different uh, axes labels, the different intervals, we can change the color, etc. So what we will do within our ggplot here is we will start to layer on additional specificity that we can explicitly choose to have a more thoughtful visualization. And one of the things we can add is different information about the axes. So the first approach that I'll show you involves specifying the limits. So we can specify the X and Y limits using code like this. And the way that we do that in ggplot is we have the, the base plot and then we add information with a plus sign to it. And I like to add it on a different line like this, but you can have it on the same line. That is just fine. I think it's a little easier for me to see when all of the additional information that's added on is added with a different line. Okay, so what we want to do first is to specify the X and Y limits. And what I mean by limit is the boundaries of this particular plot. Right now, it looks like it goes from about four to around negative 1.5. And we can specify what we want the limits to be. Imagine you had 10 different plots and you wanted all the plots to contain the same area. So you wanted to have all of the plots have a limit from negative 1.5 to five, for example. So the way we would do that, I'm actually gonna move these around a little bit. We'll put the X one on the top. So the way you would do that is you just add the values that you want to um, the limits to be. So we can specify negative four and four for the X or for the Y limit. And we can do the same for the X limit as well. Now, if we run this code, what you'll see is now the Y limits go from four to negative four, as well as the X ones as well. And we can change that to make it more narrow. We could go from one to a negative one to one, same for the Y limits. And now notice some interesting things are happening. The first important thing to tell you is when we use these particular functions, this Y limb and X limb, what it is actually doing is truncating the data. So it is kind of chopping off data values that do not fall within these ranges. 
So it essentially changed the regression line of this data by only looking at these four points that happen to fall within the plot, and then these two lines from group B that fall within the plot. So the unfortunate part about this particular technique is it is kind of filtering or sectioning off portions of the data. Now that, that might not matter if you have a wide enough range like we had previously, like this. In this version, we're not truncating any data because it, the, the intervals are far enough or are large enough to include everything. Um, so this is fine. And it's very efficient. This particular way of specifying the X and Y limits are is a very simple way. Um, but you need to be careful that you not, you're not actually truncating some information and changing the visualization in some capacity. Now let's say you want to kind of zoom up and show just a smaller portion of this, but you don't want to truncate anything. You want the data to all be there. You just want to kind of zoom up on the plot. Well, there is a, uh, another way to specify the X and Y limits that does exactly that. So this is our second approach, and it is to use this function called chord Cartesian. And uh, what this particular function does is it allows us to specify the X and Y limits as in before. Um, but when we do it in this way, it's not cutting off any values. I basically just use negative four and four to show you that we can produce the exact same plot. And I'm actually gonna take a screenshot of this for reference. And now imagine we wanted to zoom up on it and not cut off any of the data values. This is a very zoomed up version. And actually, let me zoom out a little bit just to make it more obvious what's going on here. You can kind of see it a little bit better. And if I open up this screenshot, what I want you to notice is that this is a zoomed out version of this. All we have done in this version is just to kind of zoom in on just the values from two to negative two on both axes. We haven't changed any property of the visualization, which is pretty cool. If you use this technique with chord Cartesian, you don't have to worry about accidentally truncating information, which is excellent. You're just kind of zooming in and zooming out. And we could, of course, do the opposite. We can zoom out very far for all the values. And you have this teeny tiny plot, which is ultimately just a zoomed um, out version of this particular plot. So this is one technique you can use, um, and it works very, very well. One of the things that you might want to do is you might want to specify other attributes of these axes. Right now, by default, the tick marks go in five uh, unit increments from negative 10 to 5 to 0, etc what you might want to do is to specify exactly the increments that you want. You might want to specify where these lines fall. In order to do that, you would have to use our third option. Now this is going to be a little bit more cumbersome, but it will also give us more options. And so this is uh, scale X continuous, and we can also have scale Y continuous. If you have factorial data or categorical data, you would use scale Y categorical. And I'll do another video about that. Okay, so let's try to replicate pretty much the same thing, but with this approach. So we can, in the same way, specify the X and Y coordinates. And the, in order to do this, essentially we have scale X continuous, and then we specify the limits for the X value. And we would have to add a second line of code for the Y value. So this is essentially just replicating what we've done before. We're specifying the X independently of the Y. And the cool part is that we can add in additional information as we go through here switch these again just so I don't have to scroll as far when I do this okay 
So what I want to do is add a few more specifications just to show you some of the power of this particular approach. Next one I want to add is brakes. And what the brakes do is they allow you to define exactly where these um, values appear. And the version that we have here, it goes every two values. And let's say we wanted to do something like specify, we wanted to do, let's say one, two, three, and four, and none of the negative values. Notice what's going on is now I have the break set at one, two, three, and four, and it didn't change anything about the interior plot. It's just showing where these particular lines are. And you could do something crazy like add in just one negative value like this, and it just adds in that one negative value there. Okay, so it really gives you a lot of power in terms of deciding exactly what you want these major breaks to be. So what we could actually do instead of specifying every single value, we could write a function that specifies a sequence of information. For example, here is a function that is sequence. And what we have written here is that we want the sequence to begin at negative four, go to four, and specify every, sing every one value is where a particular break will be. Now, if I run this, what you'll see is it goes from four to negative four with every one unit value. We could change this to be a half a value and we'd get quite a few more of these major ticks. And of course we could do it every two values, et cetera. So this is a really useful technique that can save you a lot of time, particularly if you have a large data set, which is excellent. Okay, the next one that we are going to want to specify is the name. The name of this is pretty simple. And we would add it in here. So for a name, you're going to want to do in uh, quotations and you can write any um, name for this particular axis. So I'll just call this um, Y axis values. And it appears here. So we just named this axis essentially. Okay, a few more that are useful. Um, we have minor breaks in here. If we add that in, what the minor breaks do is they specify these um, sub smaller breaks. And you can do the same thing. Essentially, you can add a sequence of information. Maybe you want the minor breaks to be very small like this, and we have a bunch of teeny, teeny, tiny, small breaks in there. Um, or you might want them to be bigger, or you might want them to not occur at all. And you would specify all the information using this minor breaks attribute. The last one I'm going to talk about is labels. Now for labels, the interesting thing is that if you wanted to, you could go through and change these from numbers to letters or words or anything else. And so I'm going to actually, um, instead of having this be a sequence, I'm just going to give it three values. We'll do negative one, zero, and one. And I'm going to take away this just to reduce confusion. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the three values that will occur on the major breaks, and I'm going to make them into words. So they're going to be A, B, C. And now what I have instead of negative one, zero, and positive one, I have A, B, and C. And you can change this to anything, any type of words, any type of values that you want. Now I would caution you to be careful when you're doing this because sometimes people can get very confused in terms of what they're actually visualizing. And I would encourage you rather than just to change the labeling here to go ahead and rename your values in your data set just so you're keeping everything straight. Now today we really just covered the basics of these three different techniques of specifying information on your x and y axes in ggplot, but there are many other things that you can specify in ways to tweak and really customize your axes that I didn't talk about today. Particularly if you use this technique, scale x continuous, then there's 
a ton of different elements that you can specify and change. But hopefully I've given you just enough to get started and you can look more into the options for impacting your X and Y axis. Today we learned about several methods for specifying information on the Y and X axes using ggplot. Now each of these techniques have pros and cons, so ultimately you'll have to find the technique that works best for you and learn about the different intricacies of those particular techniques. We learned specifically about continuous variables, but you may also have factor or categorical variables, and you can actually do some interesting, unique things with your axes when you have that type of data. So I'll have another video on that in the future. If you want to stay informed about when new videos are posted, go ahead and click that subscribe button and I will see you next time.